sitting in for Bob Lee, John Barr. Imagine stumbling upon a lottery ticket you're convinced is worth millions, only to be told you can't cash it because it's a fake. That's the predicament two Cincinnati men find themselves in. But it's not a lottery ticket they're looking to cash, rather a baseball card, and not just any card. Theirs, they believe, could be among the most valuable in the world. Proving that to others in the skeptic-filled and at times cutthroat world of rare card collecting can be a frustrating journey, as ESPN the Magazine's Peter Keating reports. The National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, describes Honus Wagner as the greatest shortstop in baseball history, and it calls his baseball card the Holy Grail. The Honus Wagner card is the card. It is the Mona Lisa of trading cards. Oh, the one in the middle. Indeed, the Wagner card that was produced by the American Tobacco Company in 1909 is a tiny piece of rare art steeped in mystery. One story goes that Honus wanted to be a good influence on children and demanded that American Tobacco pull his likeness from its cigarette packs. An article in the Sporting News from back in 1912 said as much and called Wagner one player in the game who is not money mad. Fact is, though, Wagner himself liked tobacco. He chewed it well into his later years. He never did give up stogies, and he even had his own 10-cent cigar. So maybe Wagner got his card pulled from the set because he wanted more money from American tobacco. We don't know for sure. What we do know is this. As a result, Wagner's 1909 baseball card, part of a set that the American card catalog later named the T206, is one of the rarest in the world. And it is the most valuable. Just last month, an Arkansas collector paid $1.62 million for one. There are different theories out there about how many are in circulation, but there's probably about 50 to 75 Honus Wagners in circulation at some point is with, the, with Boston, but it's kind of neat that you Joe Orlando is president of Professional team, Sports team Authenticator. Team, you know, people, he knows people, baseball so. cards. Yeah, that's how many of those Wagner T206 cards do you know of floating around right now? Could you pinpoint on a map if you had to? Um, I can pinpoint several of them, but a lot of the, of, of the Honus Wagner cards, like most high-end sports memorabilia, um, sometimes it disappears for, you know, a decade or two. It really does get to be like the world of rare art. Y correct. State Street in Binghamton, New York. This is a full-range antique shop with just about anything you can imagine. We have porcelain, fine china, hummels, silver, slot machine, and even some Beanie Babies. Well, Bob, beyond the Beanie Babies, you have something here that people probably would be very surprised to know is at the gallery. Well, I have a little baseball card here in the safe. You might be interested in looking at that. There he is, Honus Wagner. You look at the back of it, it's a blueback Piedmont. And this little tiny card here could be worth how much? Oh, probably in today's market, a million two, a million three. Antique shop owner Bob Connolly claims this is the real thing a T206 Wagner, the most valuable sports collectible on the planet, sitting in his store amidst old time clocks, beer steins of pirates, and Abe Lincoln. Could the ghost of Honus Wagner truly sleep in Connolly's safe, serenaded by Bobby Darren's Loving You? The search for answers takes us to a cluttered basement in Cincinnati to the card's owner. Star Wars. Meet John Cobb, who grew up in the garbage business and just doesn't throw things away. Looking for that 1972 Life magazine with Kathy Rigby on the cover? Cobb's got it. So these are cards from baseball cards from the 70s? Yes, sir. And I see some Pokemon cards. Mm -hmm. I heard those didn't keep their value. No, I got thousands of these. <laughs> thousands of them. <laughs> thousands of them. John Cobb has led quite a life. A talented keyboardist, he jammed with Bootsy Collins and once opened for Jimi Hendrix. And he has always found value in other people's junk, collecting discarded appliances, books, and jewelry, and buying all kinds of memorabilia, like the item he came across in 1984 at an estate sale. I said, I said well, how much you want for this car? He says, for $2,500. I said, man, $2,500. I said, so I dug in my pockets and everything, and I came up with 1800 now, let's just stop there for a second. At that point, did you know who Honus Wagner was? No, sir. No, sir, I didn't. Apparently, Cobb had bought the Honus Wagner card. Soon afterward, a New York investor examined the card under a microscope. She started looking and says, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The first thing he said, lithograph. I'm thinking, what in the world is lithograph? So I said, must be good, something. I'll make you an offer. 
He said, 10. I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, 10. Thinking $10 what? And this guy, I said, I don't know like that. And he says, well, I'll give you 10 grand for it. I said, 10 grand? Cobb slept on the offer, looked at his card, and decided to see if he could press for even more. He said, have you thought about this? I said, yes, sir, I have. I said, um, I said I'd take 20000 for it. The guy hesitated, and he goes, nope. I said, <laughs> gee whiz. After that, Cobb stashed the card amidst all his other collectibles. In 1991, Wayne Gretzky and then Los Angeles Kings owner Bruce McNall bought a pristine T206 Wagner card for $451,000. This is the world's rarest baseball card. In a minute, the world's greatest magician is going to destroy it. The card became such a big celebrity, it ended up a guest star on national TV two years later. David Copperfield had Gretzky, McNall, and their T206 Wagner on his magic special, and he appeared to tear up the world's most valuable baseball card. Pretty good, huh? Watching at home in Cincinnati, John Cobb and his cousin, Ray Edwards. I told Ray, I said, I got that car. John looked at me, he said, I got that car. And I said, oh, yes. And Ray kind of looked at me, I said, I got that car. I said, wait a minute, we got to get it graded so we can actually see, is it going to give us 200000 or is it going to give us $2 million? The higher a card's grade, the more it is worth. PSA, Joe Orlando's company and the dominant authenticator in the business, graded Gretzky's card in eight, the highest ever for a T206 Wagner. Cobb and Edwards contacted PSA about grading their card. They said, well, send it out to us. I said, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Nah. This is a Hamas Wagner. This is a rare card. I said, no, we can't send this. They said, I said, well, can we come out? They said, yeah, you can come out, but you have to wait out in the lobby, and then we have to go and grade it. I said, no, I like to be present because, you know, someone can scratch it, do this and do that. Anything can happen to the card. Your submission and grading and authentication procedures require people to submit a card to you, leave it with you, not be around when you're examining it. Is that correct? That is correct. That's our normal procedure. That's when it was like, okay, uh, you know, this is not going to take place then. Cobb and Edwards took their card to a Detroit authenticator who shocked them with his judgment. The card, he said, was a counterfeit. That's a conclusion that does not surprise Joe Orlando. There are so many red flags with, that, with, with the card. On the left, the Gretzky McNall T206 Wagner, while Cobb and Edwards' card is on the right. One way they differ is in their lettering. On the genuine Wagner card, the P in Pittsburgh is slightly raised whereas on the Cobb and Edwards card, the font is of uniform height. That's probably the most glaring and obvious problem with the card. Um, number two, what I noticed was the, the edges and corners are relatively square. It doesn't look worn in any way. However, <laughs> along the edges of the card, you see a lot of browning and discoloration. It looks like manufactured aging. Number three, the photo on the, on the surface is completely washed out. The colors are not consistent with any known Honus Wagner that I've ever seen. At an impasse with PSA, Cobb and Edwards have been trying to end run the memorabilia establishment for the past six years. First, they turned to science to help validate their card. In 2003, the two men drove to Appleton, Wisconsin to have the card examined by Walter Rantanen, a fiber expert at Integrated Paper Services. Rantanen concluded the card's paper stock dated to before 1921, Cincinnati printer Arnie Schwed has also looked at the Cobb Edwards card, and he says the printing is consistent with the era in which Wagner played. As for the inconsistencies of the card compared with others, I think we reached the summit of our card being the number one card in the world. It's the first Hannes Wagner era card. It's what it is. And I think it's, it's, it's with the scientific proof behind it, you know, what I say to the grading companies, bring it on. That's an interesting theory. I'll just leave it at that. I mean, uh, of course, the, the reality is anything is possible. There are many examples of errors on other cards in the T206 set, the American Tobacco series that Wagner cards come from. Is there any doubt in your mind that this is a real Honus Wagner T206 baseball card from 99 years ago? No doubt. It is the real McCoy. No doubt. Does this just threaten to take over your life? It just never ends, does it? It never ends. Cobb and Edwards have immersed themselves into the history and mysteries of their card. They've crammed scientific evidence into mountains of binders. They've highlighted countless counterfeit guidebooks. They're constantly looking for clues. It actually became addictive. 
because it was like solving the mystery. I heard you hit the Rolaids pretty, uh, pretty hard for a long oh, time. Oh, Rolaids and uh, wife telling me, you know, me and John be on the phone at two or three in the morning. Hey, you know, uh, quiet it down. I got to be at work in the morning, you know, because me and John we was constantly come up with new, doing research and so on and so forth. We would come up with new uh, avenues to travel. In 2005, their journey took them to Bob Connolly's antique shop in Binghamton in the hope that Connolly could evaluate and help sell the card. Connolly believed the card to be authentic, and he appraised it at $850,000. But before Connolly could broker a deal to unload it, Edwards got involved in a flame war, a series of online arguments with other collectors. Comments hurled at Cobb and Edwards on the vintage baseball card message boards included, the card is obviously fake, go directly to jail. They are thieves, pure and simple. You sound like someone that lives in the projects that likes to mooch off Whitey. Now, if Ray and John had been two blue-eyed boys with blonde hair from Kansas, this would have never happened. And when Connolly tried to auction off the card in 2006, the response was, At $300,000? Well, there was no response. Connolly is still holding on to the Wagner card for Cobb and Edwards, and occasionally it gets visitors. I've shown the card to several people, and they all scratch their head. And I'll think about it. If that card were real, if, if people believe that to be authentic, believe me, they would have no problem selling that card. Do you have any hope or projected date for when the sale might actually take place? Uh, I'd like to do it before I'm dead. Peter Keating of ESPN The Magazine reporting. The card in question remains to this day in Bob Connolly's Binghamton safe. One expert who believes it's a fake says it might have been skinned, which means the back is authentic. That would explain the card passing the scientific paper test, but the front has been replaced by a counterfeit Wagner image. And with that, we say good morning to Michael O'Keefe of the New York Daily News and co-author of the, the Card Collectors, Con Men, and the true story of history's most desired baseball card. Michael, good morning. Hey, good morning. We know you don't have the expertise, Michael, to judge whether this particular card is legit, but what does your gut tell you? You know, if I, if I had to bet the farm on this, I would bet against it, if only because uh, there are so few uh, real uh, Wagner T206 cards, and there are so many reprints. But uh, like I said, I don't have the expertise, and I don't want to pass judgment, but that, th the numbers don't add up. So you wouldn't buy it? I don't have the money to buy it. <laughs> Long way away. And Michael, what will it take to unravel this mystery and get a definitive word as to the card's authenticity? Well, you know, I, I think what Terry Thompson and I, my co-author in the card, uh, I think we looked at John and, and Ray. Um, we wanted to examine the, uh, the sort of the race and the, and the class issues that come up in collecting. And, and I think the one thing is that you guys touched on is that uh, the hobby has not been fair to these guys, and I think maybe the hobby needs to be a little more open-minded before uh, they pass judgment. I mean, this has been examined by a paper expert and by a printing expert, and a printing expert, by the way, Arnie Schwed, said that this card, he didn't believe that it was skinned. So uh, I, I think there needs to be a little more of an open mind. Well, you just alluded to it. Of course, Cobb and Edwards happen to be two working-class African-American guys. To what extent have they... Uh, perhaps been looked down upon by a hobby that is dominated by predominantly, let's face it, rich white guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, uh, the messages and, and, and the uh, insults and the slurs on uh, Network 54 on the Vintage Card Forum were really horrifying. And, uh, you know, I think Bob Connolly put it well. If these were two blue-eyed guys, I don't think they would have been treated like that. And it's funny because this hobby has got so many issues of fraud and bad authentication and there's so many issues going on with this As a matter of fact the FBI is uh, is investigating uh, sports memorabilia right now there's a grand jury meeting in Chicago examining evidence and testimony about fraud and shill bidding and card doctoring uh, so to pick on John and Ray to me was always kind of a head scratcher Michael, John Cobb says he found his T206 card at an estate sale. How likely is it that such a rare find, if it truly is a rare find, will be repeated? Uh, you know, the, this, this card has gotten so much publicity. I think if uh, 
there's a chance that grandpa had left it in a trunk in the attic. People have already scoured the attic to look for that. Um, probably, you know, it's like, you know, Joe Lando said earlier, anyway, anything is possible, but, but highly unlikely at this point. All right, Michael O'Keefe, we thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. To read more about the Wagner card and efforts to prove its value, pick up a copy of ESPN the magazine on sale now for more of Peter Keating's reporting.